gotten worse, and she coughs sometimes so hard she throws up more than spitting up, but everything. Okay. But not every time she eats. Um, and she's just coughing hard, and we, today she was having rapid breathing of more than 60 right. per minute. So was the nano aluminum that is making the particles so small uh, that it's rapidly absorbed through the skin, through the mucous membranes and lungs. Uh, but also a, a particular thing of interest mine was the fact that when you breathe air that contains nano aluminum, uh, it's rapidly absorbed through the, the mucosa, the lining of the nose, and enters the olfactory nerves, which are the smell nerves. And these olfactory nerves carry this nano aluminum directly to the part of the brain that's first affected in Alzheimer's disease and most severely affected in Alzheimer's disease. And that's the entorhinal cortex and the hippocampus. Uh, when you look at Alzheimer's patients and measure aluminum levels, you see the highest level at that entry point from the olfactory nerve uh, into the entorhinal cortex. So uh, we have good evidence that Aluminum is entering the nose uh, and entering the part of the brain that's affected uh, in Alzheimer's, causing abnormalities in memory and learning and uh, attention and concentration. Um, when you do this experimentally, you can trace this with a radioactive tracer and watch the nanoaluminum pass along that nerve into the brain, and then it's distributed throughout the brain. Uh, you keep doing that day after day, the levels get pretty high. Now, my concern with the, the geoengineering was the word I've got, and when I started looking it up, and one of the conferences in which their speaker was talking about it, they talked about using nanoaluminum, and the reason they were using it, they say, well, it stays suspended in the atmosphere longer because the particle's so small, and it acts like a cloud to reflect the heat supposedly back out into outer space. Uh, well, the problem is it slowly uh, descends down uh, to the Earth, enters the lakes and streams, plants take it up. So then the aluminum content of the plants we eat is much higher. The water we drink is much higher. Uh, and we breathe it. Uh, the filters in house filtering systems not small enough to filter it out. So gradually the nano-aluminum content inside your house elevates. Uh, and what we know is that nano-aluminum is infinitely more inflammatory than normal sized aluminum. So it's more toxic to the brain uh, once it gets in. And it can penetrate all parts of the cell. It easily passes through the membranes and blood-brain barrier, etc. Uh, so knowing uh, all of this, uh, I was just astounded that they were spraying uh, hundreds and thousands of tons of nanoaluminum all over the world, uh, particularly in the United States. And I you know, did a little research and looked in my own case in my skies, and, and I see these tight patterns, and it's obvious a pattern, it's not contrail, uh, the whole thing contrails is nonsense, you watch a plane fly, and it turns on this cloud and, uh, of material coming out of the back of it, and then it stops, and there's a break, and then it starts back up, well, I knew the jet's not cutting his engine off, right. uh, so, uh, you know, you have a, a 747 or a 760 them or something, we know it's not turning its engine on and off, and we know that it's not flying in a checkered pattern. And, uh, then pretty soon, uh, for instance, we've noticed lately, there's been none of the chemtrails, or very few of them. Well, did the flight bird carcasses littering the streets of Zug Island, Detroit. These kind of events are happening all over the globe. We don't hear about them because of all the theater that I've mentioned at the beginning of this program. The population has no clue what's unfolding, and the mass carnage, the mass die-off all over the world while the military-industrial complex continues to expand, while the medical-industrial complex continues to expand. From this report, with hundreds of screeching seagulls hovering above the rotting bird carcasses littering the streets of the scene near Zug Island in southwest Detroit. The scenes seem straight out of an apocalyptic horror movie. This is only one event. I'm giving one example of many events around the globe. Residents and commuters reported the deaths, some claiming to have seen at least who have seen hundreds of bloodied and rotting bird carcasses at a time. Experts are supposedly investigating the issue, testing, and trying to produce answers, but have come up with no conclusive conclusions. 
This is what the agencies do, and I've been over this week after week as well. They are paid to not know, to not disclose the truth, and to hide threats from the population, not to disclose those threats. Again and again and again, we see this with, with agencies from the EPA to air quality testing, on and on. That's what they're tasked with doing, hiding threats from the population. Another week of massive fish die-offs, as I stated earlier, continued all over the globe last week. But of course, none of this is reported by the criminal mainstream media. Please search this issue. It's not just...